In this video, we're going to look at sp3 hybridization. That's the hybridization state of carbon in this methane molecule. So if I wanted to draw the dot structure for methane, I would put carbon in the center. And carbon has four valence electrons. So I go ahead and put the four valence electrons around carbon like that. Each hydrogen has one valence electron. So I go ahead and put in each hydrogen with its one valence electron. And here's your simple dot structure for methane. Now when you connect those dots, Right, so this would, be, this would be your dot structure for methane. Turns out that all four of those bonds are equivalent. And so the four original valence electrons that we started with for carbon should be equivalent to. And so carbon can form four bonds. Let's take a look at the electron configuration for carbon to see if that matches up. So if we start with our electron configuration and we do orbital notation, so we have increasing energy over here on the left, uh, we'd start with the 1s orbital right here, and then we have the 2s orbital. Also in the second energy level, we would have 3p orbitals. This is all from general chemistry. So this is, these are your 2p orbitals right here. Carbon has a total of six electrons. So we have to fill the lowest energy level possible. So we go ahead and fill the 1s orbital with two electrons, fill the 2s uh, or orbital with two more electrons. And so we have two more left. And so using the quantum rules, we would go like that in the two p orbitals. So if I'm trying to identify the four valence electrons of carbon, those are the ones in the outermost energy level, which of course is the second energy level. So these four electrons, these four electrons right here would represent the four electrons in my dot structure. So I'll go ahead and uh, highlight those up here. These four electrons right here are represented by these four electrons in in my orbital notation. The problem is, in my orbital notation, it looks like I have only two unpaired electrons, which kind of implies that carbon only forms two bonds. And we know that's not the case. Here, carbon is forming four bonds. And so we, we need to figure out a way to make these four electrons, uh, these four valence electrons equivalent in terms of energy, and also to have them unpaired, uh, because that will allow them to form bonds with the hydrogen atoms. So, uh, Linus Pauling came up with a, uh, a, a way to make four orbitals that are equivalent. Uh, the first thing Linus Pauling said was, he said, OK, we're going to give this electron in the 2s orbital a little bit of energy. And so we're going to, prom we're going to promote it up here to the 2p orbital. This gives me four unpaired electrons, uh, which would allow me to form four bonds. The only, the only problem with this is these four electrons are not equivalent. They're not on the same energy level. So, so Linus Pauling proposed the concept of hybridization. He said, what would happen if we took uh, this s orbital and we promote it up in energy? a little bit. So there's our s orbital. And then we, we demote the p orbitals down. So we're going to have those p orbitals. We're going to demote them down. So those are the p orbitals like that. Now we could go ahead and put one electron in each one of these orbitals. But these orbitals are no longer an s orbital or a p orbital. They have, they have hybridized. They have recombined to form a hybrid. So this s orbital is no longer an s orbital. It's now an sp3 hybrid orbital. This p orbital is no longer a p orbital. It is now an sp3 hybrid orbital. And the same goes for the last uh, two p orbitals here. They're actually sp3 like that as well. And so this new hybrid that we've created uh, consists of 25% s character and 75% p character. And, uh, and, and, and since these new hybrid orbitals were formed from 1s orbital and 3p orbitals, that's why we call this sp3 hybridization. So this is sp3 hybridization. And now this picture matches our dot structures that we were drawing, right? We have our four unpaired electrons capable of forming four bonds, and they're all of equivalent energy level. So we have a 25% s character and 75% p character in these new in these four new hybrid orbitals and uh, the fancy quantum math predicts that this is going to have a certain shape to it and uh, so I know an s orbitals is uh, spherically shaped right and it's it's relatively small a p orbital is shaped like a dumbbell uh, relatively uh, bigger than an s orbital. And, and so if you, if you hybridize uh, these orbitals, uh, quantum math says that your, your new hybrid orbital is going to look something like this. So here's this carbon, which we're going to say now is sp3 hybridized. It's going to have a large 
frontal lobe and, and a small back lobe here like that. Again, that's, that's extremely uh, complicated quantum math, so we'll just uh, go with this little picture. Now, when we're actually drawing out these hybrid orbitals, uh, it's kind of annoying to have this back lobe. It's going to, it's going to kind of hinder our, our drawing. So we're going to kind of leave it out when we, when we do a drawing here. And so if we, uh, if we draw methane again, right? So now, now we know that the carbon in methane, so this carbon right here, this carbon is sp3 hybridized. And so if I were to uh, draw a picture of that carbon being sp3 hybridized, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to, again, ignore the back lobe. And so we have a carbon that now has four new hybrid orbitals. So let's go ahead and draw our four new hybrid orbitals. So each one of these orbitals I'm drawing represents one of my sp3 hybrid orbitals. And again, I'm ignoring the back lobe. And each one of those orbitals is going to have one electron. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put in my one electron to each one of those hybrid orbitals, so something like this. And uh, let's just go back up to here to emphasize that those four electrons I just drew uh, represent these four electrons, right? These four electrons, the valence electrons of carbon that are now occupying my sp3 hybridized orbitals. So I go back down to here, and uh, since I'm representing methane, uh, I need to put in four hydrogens. So I know that hydrogen is, uh, has an s orbital, has one electron in an s orbital. An s orbital is shaped like a sphere. So the, here is the, uh, here's the sphere for, for a hydrogen orbital. And we, and we go ahead and, uh, and put in its electron like that. So we go ahead and put in another s orbital for another hydrogen and put in its electron, so something like that. And we can just go ahead and do that two more times. Right, to complete our, our picture here um, of the methane molecule. And, and so once again, this, this carbon is sp3 hybridized. And the shape, uh, the shape of this molecule uh, is tetrahedral. So the, the atoms are oriented in a tetrahedral fashion um, around the central carbon atom. And this actually gives us a bond angle uh, right in here of 109.5 degrees. So I will show you how to derive that 109.5 degrees uh, bond angle uh, for a tetrahedral situation in the next video. So let's, let's look closely at uh, the bonds that we've just created between carbon and hydrogen. So if I look at it, I can see there's a head-on overlap of these orbitals here. So right here in red, there's a head-on overlap of the sp3 hybridized orbital from carbon and the s orbital from hydrogen. So this head-on overlap right here is referred to as a sigma bond. So I'll go ahead and draw the symbol for sigma. So this is a sigma bond like that. And uh, we can see that this situation is also true right here. This is a head-on overlap of orbitals. and for these as well. So we have a total of, of four sigma bonds for this example. So there are a total of four, four sigma bonds for the methane molecule, like that. Let's, uh, let's look at ethane really fast. So we just did methane, and if I were to draw the dot structure for ethane, right, I would have two carbons connected to each other, and then those carbons would be connected to hydrogen. So C2H6 is the molecular for formula for ethane. And we can see that ethane consists of only single bonds. And we've just seen that single bonds are sigma bonds, right? These are all sigma bonds here. So if we were to count up the total number of sigma bonds in the ethane molecule, just count the number of single bonds you have. So let's go ahead and go over that in a different color. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So there are a total of uh, 7 sigma bonds, 7 sigma bonds in the ethane molecule. If we were to sketch it out really quickly, um, I know that this carbon is sp3 hybridized, and I know that this carbon is also sp3 hybridized. Whenever you have only single bonds around carbon, it's going to be sp3 hybridized. So when carbon's bonded to four atoms, it's sp3 hybridized, okay? So only single bonds. So each of those carbons is sp3 hybridized, meaning that each of those carbons has four sp3 hybrid orbitals. So I'm gonna draw one of the carbons, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in its four sp3 hybridized orbitals, like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw the other carbon, which is also sp3 hybridized. So it also has four sp3 hybridized orbitals, like that. 
each of those carbons is bonded to a hydrogen. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch in the, the spherical s orbital of the hydrogen like that. So uh, I'm getting a little bit of a better picture about what the ethane molecule looks like. If I, if I look for, for those sigma bonds, right, I'm looking for head-on overlap. So there's some head-on overlap between these two carbons. So that's a sigma bond. And then once again, we have the same situation that we had before. Right? All of these also give us head-on overlap of orbitals. So we can, see, we can see a little bit better that there are a total of seven sigma bonds in the ethane molecule. A few other quick points about the ethane molecule. We have a, a single bond between the two carbon atoms. And so a single bond, uh, a sigma bond, which is also a single bond, allows for free rotation. So this, this molecule can rotate about this bond. And so you can actually spin it and get what's called a different conformation, which we'll see in later videos. So we have a free rotation around single bonds. And also, this, this particular sigma bond, this one that, that forms between the two carbon atoms, was formed from, uh, from two sp3 hybridized orbitals. And sp3 hybridized orbitals have the most p character out of the ones that we're going to discuss, with, which actually means they're a little bit larger than the ones in, in the next few videos. And, and that means that those two carbon atoms are going to be a little bit farther away from each other, which is why a single bond turns out to be longer than a double bond or a triple bond. Uh, so we will get into that uh, in a little bit more detail in the next few video in the, in the next few video videos.